that's right, you're cheating, you need to stop, you need to unplug your printer, take it out to the curb, sit there and let it go because you're not a real cosplayer if you use your 3D printer. Sorry. Hey everybody, it's Bald Fox, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I am honestly kind of terrified to talk about and I put off making this video for months because I know that people have very strong opinions about it both ways, and that is the question of, is using 3D printing in your cosplays cheating? And the short answer to that question is no. 3D printing is not cheating, and anyone that tells you that it is, is not worth your time. Now hear me out, I understand that we all have our preferences when it comes to making things. Heck, I've made a ton of costumes out of EVA foam before, I've made a lot of helmets out of 3D printing. It's preference. Everyone is entitled to have their favorite medium or material of choice when it comes to making a cosplay. So why is 3D printing different? I wanted to explore that question because as someone that got into the hobby originally from doing foam smithing and working with Warbla and foam and things like that and has now kind of graduated to 3D printing, why is like a small minority of the cosplay community committed to hand crafting? It's genuinely interesting to me to try and understand why people think that 3D printing is somehow cheating in order to make a costume. Now I will start off by saying back whenever I started cosplaying in 2016, I was one of those people that was like, uh-uh, 3D printing, mm -mm, no, cheating. I don't want anything on my costumes that is 3D printed because that's cheating. I'm gonna make everything by myself with my hands and that's gonna make me a real cosplayer. And I'm gonna explain that story later. Wow, was that a really messed up way of thinking about cosplay because there was no difference between that and someone that says, oh, you bought your cosplay from a website? You're not a real cosplayer. Now, if you're only familiar with 3D printing as a little side hobby, you might be sitting there thinking like, why would someone think that 3D printing is cheating? Or what's the big deal? Why are you so upset about this? And to be honest with you, I'm not upset about it. I really just like to use this YouTube channel in order to kind of talk through things in the cosplay space that I think are interesting. And to me, the kind of uptick in people thinking that 3D printing is somehow cheating is interesting to me. And I just wanted to talk about it with you guys and start a discussion hopefully. But back to that, you might be thinking, why would someone think that this is cheating? And that's a very valid question. But the gist is that there is a small minority of the cosplay community, and I'm sure that they're in other communities as well that use 3D printing, that tends to believe or tends to gravitate towards the fact that something is only worth making if you made it with your bare hands. For example, in the cosplay community, there is a wealth of materials that we can choose from in order to make our costumes. Heck, I only started in 2016, and just the amount of things that have come out in that like five year span of time is is unbelievable. Mostly people using those EVA foam floor mats that you find at hardware stores, or even sometimes you'll see like children's places using them as like mats on the floor, like with the alphabet and stuff in them. And I have gone through my fair share of EVA foam in order to make costumes, including my Commander Shepard, my Aloy, and EVA foam has only gotten better since then. We now have specialty places like SKS Props, TNT Cosplay Supply, that actually tailor their foam for cosplayers. Because if you've ever used EVA foam mats from the store, they always have that textured side on the one side of them that makes it kind of hard to glue things together. And for example, I used that side of the material for my Commander Shepard cosplay because it kind of looked like carbon fiber. So you can use it to your benefit. It's honestly kind of crazy whenever you think about the amount of materials that we have just with EVA foam that have come in the past five years. It's incredible the things you can make with that stuff. And then there's Warbler, which is a thermoplastic type of material that whenever you heat it up, it can form around a lot of complex curves. And it's also adhesive to itself. So you can kind of cut down the amount of glue that you're using on a costume. The best part about it is whenever it cools down, you're left with a nice hard shell kind of thing. And it's a lot more durable than just using straight EVA foam. For example, the middle section of my Aloy bow is covered in Warbler so that I know it will hold up during the long hours of a convention whenever we go back to conventions. <laughs> Some people even take cardboard boxes like Amazon boxes that you get in the mail already for free. I mean, obviously not counting the thing that was inside of the package. I think that making stuff out of cardboard is a literal art. These people, I, I, you can't even tell that they're made out of cardboard. It's incredible. I'll make sure to put them on the screen and I'll link them down below for you guys, but it's amazing. So that's just a few of the materials that we as cosplayers have come to know and love. And I haven't even scratched the surface on materials. There's tons of other things like ABS molded plastic, there's Sintra, there's I mean, I'm sure that I'm missing a ton of things that people will link down in the comments below for me. I'm trying to kind of paint the picture of that. There are so many ways for people to approach a costume. And that's one of my favorite things about this hobby is that no two people that are making a costume are going to make it the same. And we're always bringing a little part of ourselves into each costume that we make. So if you're sitting there right now and for example, thinking like, oh man, I really want to make a Bo-Katan costume, but Vault Fox is already making it. So like, why should I bother? Make yourself a dang Bo-Katan costume because you're going to put yourself into that costume 
costume and your take on Bo-Katan is going to be different than mine. And that is cool. That is important. And we need more Bo-Katans in the world. But back to my original point. Would you say that any of these materials is somehow superior to the other? And I'm not talking in the sense of saying, oh, well, it actually would probably make more sense to have foam here because that would be more flexible and all that things and it would work better with the material. No, I'm saying, would you walk up to a cosplayer at a convention or comment on their page saying, hmm, why would you use Warbler there? I really don't think that you're necessarily that great of a cosplayer unless you can master EVA foam or foam smith something. Of course you wouldn't, or at least I hope you wouldn't. And if you're saying that you would do that, please leave my page because I'm not about that energy here. I'll be honest with you guys. I've made a ton of costumes with EVA foam. It's a great material. It's low cost. The barrier to entry is very low. And since I've already made a lot of costumes out of EVA foam and Warbler, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of getting bored of it and I wanted to try something new and 3D printing allowed me to do that. I know we're all tired of hearing it, but 2020 sucked. I was one of the lucky ones that was able to keep their job and work from home. I knew how lucky I was, and yet I was still creatively stuck when it came to making cosplays, like a lot of people were, and that's okay, so I took about a month or two off. The problem was that I still wanted to make things. I still wanted to be creative, but I didn't have an outlet for it because at the end of a workday, I just didn't have anything left in the tank in order to foam smith or to get my space completely wrecked. But you wanna know what helped me restart my creativity in 2020? 3D printing. <laughs> and if my analytics show anything, it's probably helped a lot of you too. It's helped you be creative in a way that you haven't been before. I have had a 3D printer since 2018. I was mostly printing out props and small things like that. And then at the end of 2019, before everything happened, I really gravitated and latched onto the way that Zori Bliss's helmet looked. I was was just obsessed with it and I needed it in my life. And basically after the movie, I was Google searching for a Zori Bliss helmet because I knew that I wanted to try and make this costume for KatsuCon, which at the time would have been about a month and a half after seeing the movie. And I just knew that I wouldn't be able to make a helmet in that amount of time from foam as well as the rest of the costume. So I then ended up finding a file for Zori Bliss and the rest is history because I started printing that thing. And that was the very first helmet that I ever 3D printed as well as finished. And I learned a lot of stuff during that. The best part about it was I found it fun. I don't really know why I find sanding and finishing helmets fun, but I do. It's like the zen-like kind of a state that I get into whenever I go out into my garage and I just turn on an audiobook or I turn on a podcast and I just sand away and it's great. It was somehow like self-care for a little bit. I know that that sounds bizarre, but that's just honestly how I felt about it. I enjoyed what I was doing for the first time in a long time while I was making these helmets. But to be honest with you guys, I think I got pretty good at finishing helmets by the end of 2020. So to hear someone tell me that I'm somehow not a real maker or a real cosplayer because I choose to 3D print is beyond stupid and short-sighted. I think we as cosplayers need to remember that not everyone in the cosplay community is here for the same reasons that you are. We're all different both in what brings us into the hobby as well as what we want to get out of the hobby. Some of us are craftsmen. Some of us want to learn a new skill. Some of us just want to dress up and be stupid at a convention. For example, some may want to focus more on sewing and a 3D printer gives them that time to focus on that while still allowing them to make their own armor. Others may find that they enjoy the satisfaction of taking a raw print and sanding painting it up to look like something completely different. And then think about people with disabilities. I think that this is not talked about enough. Think about people that for some reason cannot physically make things with their hands. 3D printing allows them to have something, allows them to make something that they can call their own. Consider people with chronic illness who may not have the mental or physical energy in order to put in all the time that goes into making a costume. And trust me, there's still time that needs to be put into a 3D print. It drastically cuts down on the amount of time that they need to spend to make something, especially whenever time and energy is precious to people that have a chronic illness. I can understand the argument that 3D printers are an investment and not everyone has the space, time, or mental energy to deal with a printer and it's up here. But that does not mean that we should be overlooking it as a means of creation. Editing Ball Fox here, and I just wanted to mention something that I didn't really go over too much in the video because I feel like I could make an entire video series on it. And that's how a lot of people tend to think that 3D printing is a lot more expensive than they really think it is. Similar to EVA foam, 3D printing has gotten way cheaper in the past five years. For example, the printer that I started with, which is the CR10, that was about, I wanna say $350 whenever I bought it, and that was completely new. A roll of filament will cost you about $20, and the way that I print my helmets, that will basically get you an entire helmet with a little bit left over. So for about $20 in materials, you can print your own helmet. And obviously that doesn't include all of the supplies that you need to finish it and things like that, but it's a lot cheaper than you might think. And like I said, I didn't really go over that in this video too much because this was more so my feelings about people saying that 3D printing is cheating. But if you would like to see a video on the basic costs of 3D 
printing as well as how much it would cost to print like an entire costume, I can definitely put something like that together if you would like. There are a plethora of materials that cosplayers can use whenever they're looking to make a costume and no method is better than the other. If you feel the need to shame someone on the materials that they're using on their costume, I urge you to take a step back and think about why you feel that way. Because I'll tell you why I felt that way whenever I first started in the hobby in 2016. Because to me, whenever I was working on my second costume, which was a Soldier 76 cosplay, I somehow got it in my head that the only way to make a cosplay was to make it from scratch. I don't know where I got that idea from, but it's what I was running with whenever I was working on that costume the entire time. And I was determined to not order any 3D prints off of Etsy, to not pay for any costume, to not buy anything from easycosplay.com or something like that. And it was only after after I made that costume that I realized how ass backwards that way of thinking is. I realized after making that costume that I was making that costume from scratch for other people because I wanted the validation from other people to tell me, oh my God, you made that all by yourself. That's amazing. When in reality, it looked like this. I'm not saying that buying your cosplay or making your cosplay is better than the other. They're both valid ways of cosplaying. I'm trying to get across the point that if you shame someone for the materials that they use, for buying a cosplay, for really anything about their cosplay, stop. <laughs> it's not that deep. The cosplay is not made for you. The cosplay is made for the cosplayer and you don't know what a cosplayer is going through and you have no right to tell that cosplayer that they should have made it this way. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Whenever I had Lyme's disease back in 2017, I was laid out for an entire year. I was sleeping all the time. I had no energy, but you know what I always wanted to do? I still wanted to craft and I still wanted to cosplay and I couldn't do it. You know what I would have done if I would have had a 3D printer back then? I would have 3D printed all of my cosplays. I wouldn't have even cared. At that point, I would have been so happy to have been doing anything that I would have done that. So just try to understand that the way one person cosplays may not be the way that you cosplay. I try my best to bring that point across in a lot of my videos because I know that my videos primarily focus on 3D printing right now, but who's to say that I won't get back into EVA foam down the line? And heck, I still have a couple videos on making stuff out of EVA foam on this channel. I think that all cosplayers truly want is just honesty and transparency. So if you go around and you say that your store-bought cosplay or the cosplay that you commissioned you personally made people don't like that same thing goes for if you're going to enter a cosplay competition and you say that your 3d printed armor is all foam smith trust me they can tell that it's not foam smith just be honest and credit whenever credit is due if you commission someone to make a prop if you commission someone to sew something for you credit them they deserve that credit for their hard work and that will help boost sales for them in the long term same thing goes for those 3d models that you use if we didn't have 3d modelers the 3d printing hobby would not exist. I don't want a 3D model helmet, so I'm glad that people like Galactic Armory and Project 842 and Esoteric FX, they have modeled helmets for us to use. So please credit your modelers. And on that same note, just because you own a 3D file does not mean you can print it for profit. That's a whole other video unto itself. But seriously, that's why anytime that I'm making a helmet on this channel, I credit the modeler. I say who the modeler is because I didn't model that. I don't know how to model that. I want to give them all of the sales. I want to give them all of the referrals because they deserve it. They're the people that make this hobby go around. So please credit your modelers. In conclusion, there is really no reason for you to be agonizing or getting anxiety even over what material you're using in your cosplay. Because at the end of the day, we should all just be happy to have made something at all from nothing because that's what is so cool about this hobby. We're taking things from our favorite properties, our favorite fandoms, and we're making them real and physical and we're making them so that we can wear them. That is crazy. Do you even know how many skills go into being a cosplayer? Because you are basically a costuming department all by yourself. You should be proud of that, no matter what material you're using. And for me, I just have this inner drive to make something with my hands. Because I work a desk job, I don't feel like I'm physically making something every day. And that's what cosplay helps me do. It helps me to take something like a roll of filament and make it into a 3D printed helmet that I can wear and share and, you know, hopefully inspire you to make something of your own. And one more thing, let's not discount the amount of people who are just getting into the cosplay community because of 3D printing. For some people, 3D printing 
may be their gateway drug into doing many, many more things within the cosplay community. And isn't that what we all really truly should want? We really just want more people to engage and become a part of this community because honestly, it's just so much fun to make costumes and become your favorite characters. Why are we discouraging that by saying that 3D printing is somehow lesser than other forms of making a costume? Because it's not. So anyways, that was apparently a long overdue event session slash therapy session that I just needed to do to my camera. And now it's on the internet for all of you to enjoy for the rest of eternity and for people to tell me that I'm wrong and to comment down below and say that, oh my God, you're an idiot. Why are you thinking this way? Feels good. Seriously though, guys, thank you so much for sticking around as well as just being a really awesome community to just talk with. I genuinely really appreciate talking with you guys in the comments, whether it's to help you guys, you know, fix your 3D printing issues or just to talk about cosplay in general because this is a really unique hobby, a really fun hobby that I just really hope to inspire people to partake in and let you know that it's not as scary to get into as you might think. And I really would love to start a discussion on this because it is something that I feel very strongly about. And it's not just the whole 3D printing is cheating thing. I strongly believe that that you can make a costume out of whatever you want. Don't think that because I have 3D printing mostly on my channel that you have to 3D print. No, choose whatever material you want to. You're gonna be a cosplayer no matter what and you're gonna look awesome. I feel strongly that there is absolutely no material to work with that is superior to another. There may be preferences. Please just don't shame people for maybe starting out with working with foam or maybe they're working with 3D printing first. Why are we shaming people for what materials we're using? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like, but I will catch you guys next week, hopefully with a less ranty video. Bye! For example, the middle section of my Aloy bow is covered in warbles so that I know- Oh, excuse me. <laughs>